In this example, I want to show you how to switch it from being a while loop to a for loop. So I'm going to put a for loop in here, and a for loop will automatically give us a counter. So we're going to call our counter circle size. And we're going to start with an initial value of 5. And we'll have a final value of size. And we're going to step by 25. And I'm going to hit OK here. And then we're going to delete this. We're going to put, make our circle here be circle size. And we won't need this at all. And I still want that. So what we're doing is we're making the loop do the incrementing for us. So we've created our variable name, circle size, and we're using that to determine the filled circle. Now again, this time we're moving forward. We're going to flip this in a second. So you're going to see this one, since we're using the filled circle, we actually want to do this backwards. So we're going to make this size, we're going to make the final one 5, and we're going to step by negative 25. Let's try that. And you can see that nicely has each filled circle on top of it. And again, you want it when you're using the filled circle, you want to have the smallest one last. Because if we had done it the original way, it would have put the largest one on top, and you wouldn't have seen the other circles. So beware that you can increment in either direction. And sometimes, like with filled circles, you will want to go backwards. So with the for loop, your increment variable, circle size, can actually be doing your work for you. And that can simplify things. You use a for loop when you're doing things for a set number of times.